Hey everybody. Well, we just finished putting the final touches on the nav pod that I've been building from scratch. Uh, I've never done any fiberglass work before, uh, so it was quite the learning experience. We got the C125 uh, Raymarine chart plotter. Uh, it's not the touch screen, it's still dials and stuff, but wanted to get a bigger chart plotter for the boat, something that was easily visible. And when I started looking at the actual price for buying a nav pod just for that chart plotter, we were looking at $450 and uh, I figured I could probably make one for less than that. So I did make one and uh, uh, grand total, I think I'm up to maybe 220 bucks, uh, but I did build quite the extensive one. So it actually has room for other gauges in it, uh, wind instrument and depth and whatnot. So, you know, if I'd have bought the one designed specifically for that chart plotter, I'd have been at about $450 and then another 300 bucks for the, uh, the, the long skinny one. And, uh, you know, so we're looking at probably seven, 800 bucks between tax and shipping and all that. So, uh, I'm going to kind of, I've got some pictures of it. I didn't really take footage while I was making it for the simple fact that I was going to have epoxy and fiberglass all over my hands. And I really didn't want to be dealing with the camera and trying to, you know, set it up and be able to move it around and get a bunch of stuff on it. So in between each phase, after I got cleaned up, then I went into a couple of pictures. So you can kind of see how the phases were going. Um, I'll go through and explain, you know, kind of step by step how I did it. Um, I didn't have a plan. I didn't have prints. I didn't even have a tape measure. Uh, I was on the way home from work, thought about what I wanted to do, kind of snowballed in my brain exactly what kind of materials I would need. Picked up some plywood and some styrofoam for filler to help kind of give it shape. And I ended up using quite a lot less material than I had originally thought I was going to need. Um, I did build it a little overkill. Um, I'm going to put handles on it uh, if at all possible. Uh, where I'm going to mount it, I'll probably lose access to the uh, stainless steel tubing that comes up that you grab onto when you're in the cockpit. So I planned on putting some handles on the nav pod itself and uh, hopefully, you know, gain what I'm going to lose by mounting it on the, the binnacle. So uh, here we go. So like I said, I really didn't have a plan. I picked up some plywood and uh, picked up some styrofoam. And then I just started measuring and building off of the actual template to mount the chart blotter. Uh, cut the hole out, got a little bit of room on either side of it, tapered the wings, put them at a 45, used that styrofoam for a filler. Started to shape it, you know, just using a steak knife, slowly cutting it and getting it to the form I wanted. And then I started to uh, reinforce it with some fiberglass and resin. That was quite the experience. Um, I had some bubbles you can see in that corner. That resin and stuff doesn't want to uh, form around corners real well. So uh, I found out later that you need to use a polyester resin in order to get it to, to wrap corners because the polyester will actually dissolve the fiberglass whereas the epoxy doesn't. Uh, learning curve there. But uh, so I just slowly worked them back and forth and eventually got the corners to start to build up. Um, laid it on, you know, fairly heavy. Uh, I think I've got total four or five layers of glass on top. Um, slowly built it up, reinforced the corners, double layers. Uh, you can see in the center there, I put um, an extra, actually there's, there's three more layers than what encompasses the rest. So I have strength there for the mounting and then on the top where I plan on putting the handle I've got uh, numerous layers on there as well to help with the reinforcing. Um, found out that heat definitely helps activate this stuff so when uh, I was mixing up a big batch of it you can see here it it actually started to set up it started to smoke inside the mixing container and uh, it got hard and ripped the tip off of the brush that I was using to wet out the surfaces. So. Uh, you need to do this in an environment that's, you know, probably no hotter than about 85 degrees. But by setting it out in the sun, in 112 degrees, that resin set up really good. Then uh, started mixing up a fairing compound. The fairing compound is West System 410 
I used the 105 epoxy resin and the 205 hardener. Um, I started to use some West System 404, not a good idea. That stuff is really good for, for bonding things together, but it is not something that you want to start fairing out with. And it says it is a filler, but it's an adhesive filler, not a fairing compound. So once I started using the actual fairing compound, then sanding became really simple. Um, you can see here, we had it all fared out and I painted it kind of a kind of a beige light tan color kind of go with the boat but I wasn't happy with that color and I had some gel coat so I mixed up some gel coat sanded all that stuff off and repainted it with a gel coat after uh, we had mounted all of the stuff in it and, and test fitted to make sure you know that it was worth sanding down and, and putting back together but uh, all in all, I think it went pretty well. We're going to be headed to the boat this weekend, and we're going to hopefully get it mounted. So I'll take some video of that.